Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about the isNumeric function in VBA and how to use it to validate data entry to make sure your users aren't just typing in garbage. Today's question comes from Zachary in Germantown, Maryland, one of my gold members. Zachary says, I often need to print multiple copies of invoices. I have an input box that opens and asks the user how many copies they want. If they enter gibberish, like whatever, I get an error message. I know I can use on error to bypass the error, but is there a better way? Yeah, of course there is. There's a couple things you can do. First, check to make sure they entered something. Then we'll check to see if they entered a numeric value using the isNumeric function. Then we'll do some other checks, like you want to make sure they didn't enter a negative number or a number that's stupid high, like 5,000 copies. So let's take a look at how to set this up. First off, this is a developer level video, which means you're going to need some VBA. And if you don't know how to program in VBA, go watch my intro to VBA video. It'll teach you everything you need to know in about 20 minutes. And you can use isNumeric without VBA. You can use it in a query or in a form field. But uh, the example we're going to use today is going to be with a little bit of VBA. We're also going to be using some variables to store the values that the user enters and some other stuff. We're going to use a couple if then statements to make sure the user has typed in some valid information like if it's an empty string, then exit out, that kind of stuff. We're going to use an input box to get the value from a user. That's where you can pop up a little window that says, hey, type in a value. That's an input box. And we're going to use a for and next loop to loop through the actual printing of the invoices. And I'm not going to print invoices. I'm not going to waste paper, but we'll simulate it. Now, these are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. If you don't know how to do any of these things, go watch those videos first and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, we've got customers and customers can have orders and orders can be printed as invoices. And there it is. Now, if you want to print this directly to the printer, you can do that. Uh, I use the print preview as my default option. So if we come in here and take a look at the button, design view, right click, build event, brings up your code builder. All right, and there we are. We refresh the record first. That makes sure that we save whatever's in here, right? Because if you just open up the report and this form is dirty, then you're not going to get accurate information. And I cover that in my invoicing video. I'll put a link to that down below as well. That's the video where I show you how I build this database. Then our do command open report opens up the invoice in preview mode. If you want to print it, then you'll use AC view normal, but I use preview. But if you want to print it, you'll do normal. I'm going to put normal in there just to remind all you guys, but I'm going to actually rim that out because I'm not going to be doing any printing today. I'm not wasting my paper for you guys. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So in here is where we're going to ask the user, hey, how many copies would you like of this? And then we'll just loop through you know, one, two, whatever they type in. So we'll need some variables first. Let's come up here. We're going to dim S as a string. Always get the input box uh, value that they type in as a string. If you want to convert it to a number after that, you can convert it to a number. But, but the input box returns a string, so that's what you want to use. Then we'll need two other variables, X as a long and counter as a long. Counter is going to be what we turn S into if it's valid. That'll be our counter variable. So if they want 10 copies, counter will be 10. And X will be our loop counter, right? One, two, three, four, five, and so on. All right, so we'll refresh the form, and then we'll ask the user how many copies they want. So S is going to be equal to input box, how many copies. And you can put a limit on it, right? Like 1 to 10, right? If they want 500 copies, no, they'll just have to do this 50 times, <laughs> right? Title for the box, I don't know, print invoice. And you can set a default. I put a default of one on this maybe. Okay. Now, the first thing I like to do after every input box is I always say, if S is an empty string, then exit sub. That means they either clicked cancel or they, they deleted what's in the box and then hit okay. Either way, you're going to get an empty string. That means they didn't give you a value. Just exit out. All right. Now, at this point, we have something. There was something in the input box. So I'm going to check first to see if it's a numeric value. So I'm going to say, if not is numeric s, then 
and if they entered in something that's not numeric, right? If not is numeric, I know it seems kind of weird English wise, but there isn't a not numeric, so it's is numeric. So is numeric will return true if they type in a valid number, okay? And this can be any kind of number. It could even be a double, like 4.6. Okay, so we're going to convert it to a long in just a minute. All right, we're basically saying if it's not a numeric value, then we're going to say, hey, message box, invalid entry, enter a number from 1 to 10, like that. And then exit sub, get out of Dodge, right? They, what they typed in was garbage, bye, right? So now at this point, we've got a number. Okay, now we're going to take that S, that string, and convert it to a long and store it in our counter variable. So counter equals C-L-N-G-S. I should have put this in the prerequisites. Uh, convert to long. All right, there's a, there's a convert. Uh, it's called uh, a type variable casting. You're going to convert from one variable type to another, right? Take a string, make it a, a, a long integer, that kind of stuff, all right? Just see double, see currency, see boolean, all those different things. Yeah, I knew I got a video on it somewhere. Here you go. I got videos for everything. <laughs> and if you find a topic I don't have a video on, you let me know. If you try to search for something access related on Google or YouTube and one of my videos doesn't come up, you let me know. I'll make one. That's my goal. <laughs> All right. So now at this point, the value the user's entered has been converted to a long. And now we can check the value itself. So if counter is less than one, then message box uh, minimum one required exits up All right if counter is greater than 10 then All right max 10 allowed exits up All right now we're ready to actually do our printing so here's what we'll say for x equals 1 to counter and then our print command will go here where we print it All right but I'll just message box for now a message box All right printing copy x Right, you could you could status bar that too. You could put it, or if you or if you use my status box function, that would be a good use for that too. And then when you're all done, message box done. There you go. Let me see if I can get you the whole thing in one window. There, there it is. All right, debug compile, save it, close it, close it, open it. Let's print them. How many copies? Let's put in X or whatever. Meh. Invalid entry because they didn't enter something good. All right, hit OK. How about if they hit cancel? No, nope, that just exits out. How about if I put in negative five? Nope, minimum one required. How about if I put in 2,000? Nope, or 20,000, whatever that number was. All right, what if I put in four? Printing copy one, printing copy two, printing copy three, printing copy. It's like at the fair, right? Ball number one. Ball number two. I never win that game. I never win that game. The little kid next to me always wins that game. But that's it. That's pretty straightforward, right? Not that bad. Just getting the value. Check to make sure they entered something. Now see if it's numeric. And then you can check your, your bounds, the upper lower bounds, right? Okay. If you want to learn more about is numeric, I cover it in great detail in my Access Expert Level 25 class. Expert means we're not into developer stuff. You can use a lot of these functions not in VBA. And I cover them in the Access Expert series because you can use these in, in, uh, in, in queries and in form fields, right? You can make a query that says, you know, if it's, you know, pick S and make, see if it's numeric or not before you convert it to something else, right? And there's is null. We know that. Is date. Is error, right? Is numeric. There's logical functions. I do a comprehensive guide to functions. There's the several of my classes. We just go through all the functions, right? String functions, the logical functions, the math functions. Yes, we go over the trig functions too. Believe it or not, I've had people use trig. Like in the example I give in the class, we, we use trig to calculate the height of a building. Pretty cool. You know, you take the angle of it and the distance you are and all that. Use tangents and all that cool stuff. Daytime functions. I got, I got, I got functions, people. I cover all the functions. Okay, these are my access expert classes. I'll put links to this down below. And that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can.
Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, $1. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members, Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. 
and I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full-length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a Diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.